today we are going to discuss about segmentation genes so in the part 1 video we already discussed about the introduction to maternal effect genes in the part 2 video we have discussed about maternal effect genes in details all the maternal effect genes that have a role in forming the polarity of embryo the next important genes are segmentation genes so in this video we are going to learn about different classes of segmentation gene so i am punima i welcome all of you to my class free life science class okay let's move into our so what are segmentation genes the genes that are involved in the pattern formation in the early embryonic stage they are known as segmentation genes so these genes have an important function that they will assess the pattern in the embryo they will determine the pattern in the embryo okay these genes are also known as zygotic genes these are not maternal effect genes they are not transcribed from the mother they are synthesized inside the zygote after fertilization hence it is also known as zygotic gene okay so these genes are expressed only after fertilization there are mainly three classes of segmentation genes the gap genes parallel genes and segment polarity genes okay basically the class segmentation genes are classified into three gap genes parallel gene and segment polarity genes okay so these genes these all three genes will have an important role in the segmentation okay so these gene means zygotic gene are responsible for forming body segment we can say that here the cell is committed to do a function what is commitment the cell is committed means the cell decided to get a feed if if a cell is to change into head then the cell will change into head it will not change into tail so cell is committed there are two type of commitment specification type and determination type here it is determination that is the commitment is irreversible that is if the cell is committed means it is reversible that irreversible that it means the cell will definitely change into its particular segment okay in the specification type of commitment the cell can re reversible that means the commitment can be reversible because if a cell is committed to a particular function it is committed to a uh, do a feed that is it is if it is going to be a head but there is a chance if there is a factor near to it which influence it to change into another segment then the cell will change into an another segment such type of commitment is said to as specification where the commitment is reversible it can be changed but in case of determination the commitment is irreversible okay so here the cell is determined to do a particular function that is it is determined to form body segments okay so these genes help the embryo to form segments and parasegments we can say like this parasegments are the subdivisions of the segments where they represent anterior and posterior part of each segment okay so these are all about segments the genes divide the early embryo into repeating series of segment that is we can say that there are 14 para segment in the drosophila embryo okay so in this case we can say that there are three head regions 
prethorax region and eight abdominal parts so i will show another diagram here you can clearly see that so this three are head regions and this three are thorax region and the remaining eight are abdominal segments okay so the para segments are the subdivision of the segments where they represent anterior and posterior part of each segment so this is a segment where it show this is the anterior part this is the posterior part of this segment and if you take another segment this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part of the another segment likewise you can clearly say or clearly represent the anterior and posterior part of the each segment let's look on the gap chains there are five different gap chains nerve scrupal joint talus and hunchback so these are distributed in an embryo like a concentration gradient look here in the case of nerves you can see that the nerves is concentrated here when it move to the other side we can see that the concentration of nerves protein is reducing or declining afterwards the other protein get increased and the other one is like same like that some places where these uh, proteins have a high concentration and in some other region they have less concentration so from this we can say that if a protein is at high concentration there will be no other protein there okay likewise if vicoid is present here then crupal will not be seen that's why the crupal is seen in the middle portion you know that vicoid is a maternal effect chain and this vicoid is seen in the anterior position and here the vicoid protein is more and it is getting declined to the towards the posterior portion and the crupal will develop in the middle portion because the vicoid is not there okay so some proteins have inhibitory effect on other here the crupal have inhibitory effects from the other proteins like joint then uh, vicoid then uh, hunchback talus etc so mainly the gap genes are nerves crupal joint talus and hunchback where this hunchback is embryonically transcribed one it is not maternally transcribed hunchback so maternally transcribed hunchback we already discussed it in the part 2 video so this is not that one this is zygotic one that is after the fertilization the zygotic gene transcribed this protein that is hunchback this have a very very uh, important role in the formation of segment because uh they will help in forming thorax region okay it can act like a gap gene in the posterior part also it can act as a transcription activator as well as a repressor and crupal expression in the middle is regulated by by this hunchback as a repressor and the nerves joint are expressed in the anterior as they are repressed by the hunchback at the posterior portion okay so this is all about hunchback and it is very very important that these gap genes are expressed in the early developmental stages and these genes generally defines the part of the embryo that is they develop into segment on the later stages okay so this gap gene defines head thorax and abdominal region we already discussed that this uh, gap gene helps in forming para segment there are 14 para segment three head regions three abdom three um, thorax region and eight abdominal region okay so if there is a mutation in these genes then what will happen a segment will be absent that means a gap will develop in the developing embryo hence these gene got the name gap genes okay so the gap genes are the first set of zygotic genes that are activated after fertilization so 
these are the genes that are expressed or activated after fertilization okay their expression result in broad bands in the embryo so remember this example it is very very important if you are preparing for any competitive exam entrance exams so these are the gap genes nerves croupon jain tailless and hunchback okay so these will help in forming segments in the embryo and also these gap gene have a role in the, uh, in activating pair role gene also and we can discuss this in the next slide okay so let's summarize about gap genes so gap genes helps in forming segments the gap genes are expressed under the control of maternal effect genes like bicoid and nanos and helps in the forming patterns here you can see that the maternal effect gene will induce gap gene that is the maternal uh, effect gene produces some transcripts like mrna or any proteins which can activate gap genes so these gap gene will help in forming body segments para segments etc and also the transcript of these gene can activate pair role genes pair role gene will activate segment polarity genes and the gap genes and pair role gene along with i'm sorry gap gene along with pair role gene will activate homeotic box genes okay so this is all about gap genes and there are some other points which can uh, give you marks when you study this that is there is a protein called torso that is also a maternal effect gene they genes are seen at the poles of the anterior pole or the posterior pole these torso proteins are seen at the poles of the embryo which helps in forming extreme portion of the anterior and the posterior segments and this protein will induce the formation of tailless gene okay and the other one is hunchback the hunchback helps in the expression of croupel and nerves okay so hunchback helps in the expression of croupel and nerves we can see that hunchback i already discussed it hunchback is of two type one is maternally transcribed one and other one is embryonically transcribed one and if the bicoid you know that in maternal effect gene bicoid is seen in the anterior position so when the bicoid concentration begins to decline where the croupel will develop okay the croupel get activated so that we can see that the croupel is seen in the middle of the embryo so here you can see that bicoid here its concentration is more when coming to the posterior portion the concentration gets reduced and the croupel get activated after the bicoid get declined okay and also you know that uh, you know one more thing that bicoid hunchback tailless nerves and joint are the five regulatory proteins which regulate croupel okay which are the five regulatory protein which uh activate the croupel regulate the croupel one is bicoid okay bicoid then hunchback bicoid hunchback nerves i'm sorry bicoid hunchback nerves then joint and tailless these five genes regulate croupel and uh, no, not the genes the proteins so these five proteins will regulate the croupel okay and one more thing is that if the concentration of hunchback and joint if these two are in high concentration then it will inhibit the croupel okay if the hunchback and jain is in high concentration also the tailless gene also okay 
if the concentration of hunchback jaint and tailless tailless is also seen in this portion okay so tailless jaint and hunchback if these three genes are in high concentration then they will inhibit the propel okay so the gap gene encode the transcription factor that regulate the expression of pair rule genes we already said this point that is the transcription factors of gap gene will regulate the pair rule genes okay this is all about gap genes remember that these genes are generally defines the part of the embryo that will develop late into segments in the drosophila these gap gene define head thorax and abdomen abdominal region and if there is any mutation in these genes what will happen the segment will be absent or a gap will develop hence they got the name gap genes okay so the gap gene are the first set of zygotic genes activated after fertilization its expression result in the formation of broad bands in the embryo okay this is all about gap genes and we will discuss about pair rule genes and segment polarity genes and also about homeotic box genes in the coming video lectures okay so please subscribe to my channel if you are new to my channel and also click on the bell icon so that you will get notifications when i upload the new uh, lectures on the as the continuation of this one and also uh, if you liked my video please give me a thumbs up it will be a great support for me thank you for watching my video